Hey, so my friend asked me to build a PC gaming setup as a gift for her son this coming Christmas. Uh, the kid was also doing good at school. That's why she decided to spoil him. <laughs> anyway, the budget is $3,000. That's supposed to be including tax already. It's supposed to have peripherals, which are the keyboard, mouse, headset, and monitor. So I came up with all these parts. Now, let's build it. All right, so before we build the PC, we're gonna start talking about the parts first. So let's start with the CPU here. What we have here is the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X. Reason we have this is because the 5900X that I'm trying to actually buy is not in stock. And it's a little bit more expensive than what we want to spend for a CPU. So I think we are good with the Ryzen 9 3900X. Uh, also, the kid is not just gonna do some gaming. He likes to sing and maybe he will do some video editing in the future. You know, editing the videos, him singing, all that stuff. And maybe streaming in the future as well. So this 12 core, 24 threads is gonna be good enough for that. Next in line is the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro white version. This is a two stick kit running at 32 mega, 3200 megahertz. I actually wanna do a 3600 megahertz with this one, but I already have this laying around. I'm not using it, so I'm just gonna put it in the build. This is two 16 gigabytes, so it's a 32 gigabyte kit. Why 32 gigabyte? Because uh, for video editing. 16 gigabyte for video editing is not enough anymore, based from my experience. So for the bundle board, we do have the ASRock B550 Pro 4, which was on sale. That's why I purchased this one. And it's a nice looking board. I didn't really spend that much on the motherboard. It should be decent enough for overclocking. And it's, it's gonna support the newer chipset, the Ryzen 5000 series, the Ryzen Zen 3, you know, just in case we grab a chip and then put it right here in the future. The newer graphics card, the AMD 6800 XT, which is gonna be our graphics card. I'll talk about that later on. And um, PCIe 4.0, M.2, and VME SSDs as well. So it's gonna be supported in this one. So definitely a decent motherboard for this build. So for our hard drive, we do have a Western Digital Blue one terabyte hard disk drive. That's for storing photos, you know, videos, full work stuff, documents, if our SSD is not enough. And for the SSD, we do have the Intel 665P series, one terabyte. It's not a PCI 4.0, but it's gonna do the job done. It's plenty fast for the stuff that he's gonna be doing. He doesn't really need that super fast NVMe SSD. It was on sale, it's only $82. Good power supply. We have a Corsair RM750X. This is plenty enough power for, for our build. It's white and it's fully modular. 80, 80 plus gold. So it's pretty decent power supply. I have nothing but a good uh, experience with Corsair power supplies. This is actually my personal power supply in my rig right now. Let's talk about the case. The case is a Fantex Eclipse P360A. I swear to you guys, I am not a Fantex fanboy. I just really like how the Fantex cases look. As you guys maybe know that my per on my personal rig, I do have a Fantex P500A. And before that, I had a Fantex N2 Lux. This one is a white version as well. Really nice looking. It's not so big. It's actually a little bit smaller than my P500A. It looks nice and it's gonna have super nice airflow because of the mesh in front. All right, so for extras, we do have some extra fans. We wanna make it look nice as well with really good airflow, of course. SK120, It's uh, we can daisy chain this on the existing fans on the P360A. More airflow and more RGB. Yeah, RGB goodness. And of course, we're gonna supplement that with our uh, Fantex fan controller for it to make it easier. I want to control everything. No, I'm not gonna use the, the controller included here. We're gonna control everything on the motherboard. Um, so here we go. That's why we have the Fantex universal controller. 
For our peripherals, we do have the... Well, let's start with the headset first. Uh, it's the Corsair Virtuoso RGB Wireless. I used this for a couple of weeks. I really like the uh, virtual surround, 7.1 surround sound. Um, you can really hear where the enemies are coming from. I tested Overwatch and Valorant with this one, and you can definitely hear where the footsteps are coming. It's really, really good in that one. For our mouse, also white, is a G305 wireless. It lasts forever. The battery just lasts forever. It's a small mouse for my hand. I have a small hand, so it's pretty good. I used this for a couple months now, and I have no problem with it. Really good connectivity, gets the job done. Very good experience with this one. I really like this one. For our keyboard, we do settle with a Royal Kludge RK71 because it looks nice and it's very cheap. It's very, uh, it's thick, it's robust. Maybe when you're typing it, it feels cheap. That's how it sounds like. But I used it for a couple of weeks. Um, not this one, but I had one before. Oh, the RGB is really nice too. RGB, yeah. So uh, you can use this as wireless, but only on Bluetooth. There's no like 2.4 gigahertz of that but you can connect it right here, USB Type-C. So you're good with that. I tried it for a couple of weeks, like what I said earlier, never, I didn't really have a problem with that. For the monitor, we uh, decided to go with an ultra wide. It's a Viotech. We don't, we don't have it here currently. We got it to be shipped to my friend's house right away because I don't really need the monitor here. It's a Viotech. 34 inch curved gaming monitor, 144 hertz, 4 ms, not that bad. Uh, it's G Sync and FreeSync ready. It's 14, did I say 1440p earlier? 1440p ultra wide. It's only at 399. So I think I think that's the best value that I was able to find for a 1440p ultra wide monitor. Okay, so for our very special part, always out of stock graphics cards. Can't even grab anything, RTX, 30 series, nothing. So we decided with the AMD, AMD RX 6800 XT, which is right here. It's right here, guys. It's the imaginary version of the AMD RX 6800 XT. Very beefy. Look how beefy this graphics card. These are, this, these are out of stock everywhere. Any, any graphics card, I think, the newer graphics card, the 30 series, you know, the 6800 series, 6900, they're all out of stock, but we do have it here in hand. It's the imaginary version though. And sadly, we don't have the 6800 XT real version. We only have the imaginary version because of all these bot scalpers. So nobody can get it, except for the people that's close to Micro Center. I pre-ordered it in online store. It's uh, OG 10K Tech. I'll put the link in the description. Pretty much I'm on queue right now. I'm just waiting for stocks to arrive and uh, they're gonna ship me my 6800 XT. So sad for the kid. He's gonna have a PC without a graphics card for the meantime, you know, but uh, he can still do schoolwork for now. Uh, and also sadly, we cannot do benchmarks at the moment. Um, maybe I'll do a follow-up video, we'll see. Yeah, so uh, let's do the build and see how it's gonna look like. Let's go.
Okay guys, so here is the build with its glory minus the graphics card because we don't have the graphics card yet. I had to add a graphics card here, of course, so it could post. I had to install Windows and everything. So the PC is working now. Um, Windows is installed. All the drivers uh, are installed as well. Some of the softwares needed here, of course, the it's the ASRock Polychrome RGB software. We had to install that so we can fully control all the RGB lightings here in the case on all the fans and, and the motherboard as well. So they're all addressable RGB. Uh, I also did a fan curve control on the motherboard for all the fans. I I connected all the fans on the Fantex fan controller. So we do have that. So for the graphics card that I installed here, it's, it's a pretty old graphics card. It's a GTX 660 laying around here. I just put it here so the, the owner of the computer could play a few games. Sadly, we could not do a benchmark, of course, because we don't have the 6800 XT yet. But I did a, a CPU benchmark. We did a few Cinebench benchmark here. Uh, the score earlier was 18265, and that's for the default, uh, no or overclock or anything. But what I did here is I did a, a conservative overclock, which uh, I just did a 4.2 gigahertz overclock on the CPU and I down vaulted it to 1.3 and the score went up to 18930. Uh, I don't really need to overclock it higher because we do only have a stock cooler here. And the owner is not going to need that for now, at least for now, maybe when he learns how to do it himself will get um, a better cooler. So about the temperature here, after running Cinebench for around 30 minutes, we did had a maximum of 83 degrees Celsius. That's with the down voltage on the CPU. Uh, but earlier when it was running at stock, went up to around 86 to 87. Down volting the, the CPU really helped a lot in terms of the temperatures. All right, so experience on the P360A, it's very similar to my main rig, the P500A. If you haven't seen that video, you can click this uh, little box right here. Definitely similar to building the P500A. It's also uh, very easy uh, with a few exceptions. So right here inside, there's a lot of space here. So I didn't have any issue putting in the motherboard, cables and all that stuff. The exception that I was talking about is when I had to add one more SATA cable. There's not enough room there to, you know, put my hand because there's only a small space between the power supply with all those cables out and uh, the hard disk drive tray. When I had to add one more SATA cable because I forgot to add one more, I had to remove, unscrew everything on the power supply and then put it there. It's probably my fault anyway but that's just one thing another hardship that i had was uh, doing some cable management i mean there's enough room yes i would appreciate it more if there's more velcros so we can manage our cables better since i do have one two three four five drgb fans that's also another thing that's why i had a hard time uh, doing some cable management here there's so many cables when you do have a drgb fans all right so i what I could have done better here. Uh, if we're not trying to save money for the build, I would have added nicer looking extension sleeves right here. These cables are, they're not that bad. They're all white anyway, so it doesn't look awful. Uh, another thing that I would upgrade here is the stock cooler or maybe an AIO that's white. It should uh, give us better performance with the, the temp temps so we can overclock this CPU even more and um, nicer looking aesthetics. And for the price, we did hit our budget. It's actually slightly below our budget. I think we spent 2600, 2700 here. Uh, that's including all the peripherals, uh, the monitor and the taxes. So we did we did good. And our our customer, my friend, is going to be happy with this build. Of course, the kid is going to be happy. It looks really nice. The only thing she, he's not going to be happy maybe is because we don't have the graphics card yet. But, you know, patience is a virtue, right? He has to understand the market right now. It's crazy right now. Everything is out of stock on what consoles, PC parts, CPU, 
and um, graphics card. So, alright, so that's it for everything that I have to say with this uh, build. If you guys do have any question with the build or with all the parts that we use here, go ahead and put it on the comments down below. Like this video if you did enjoy it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. That's going to be it for this video. Guys, thank you for watching and you will see me on the next one. Yeah, bye.